Hello Dreamers and welcome back to my channel for a new appointment with my animation tutorials. Today we finish the topic uh, Assassin's Creed to close the circle on that project and from the next few weeks uh, we'll talk about something else. And you will say, finally! <laughs> Before we start uh, I want to talk uh, to you uh, for a moment about the situation of Procreate Dreams uh, at the moment. The Savage team has been silent for a few months after the last announcement that the development path of Dreams was mapped out and the work was progressing towards the release of the new update. Obviously, after this month of silence, the doubts increase on the part of the community and many are wondering whether or not to continue investing their time on this application or move on to something else. I can tell you what my point of view is and that is that I will continue to work on Dreams and the more I go on the happier I'm to use it. Certainly using it a lot, my experience is growing more and more. Creating cartoons is not easy on any software and it still takes a lot of practice and study. But the results that I'm bringing forward here are giving me a lot of satisfaction. And above all beyond the applications we use, we must always keep in mind the progress made in a short time. A few years ago it was unthinkable to do things like this on an iPad and I'm speaking to you as someone who started drawing on a Wacom attached to a computer, not to mention paper even before. So in my opinion we must have a little patience and make the most of what we already have. Before starting the tutorial I remind you that there are only a few weeks left until Easter and I have set myself the goal of reaching the 1000 subscribers by that date. It won't be easy but I hope for your support and as always I want to thank you for your help in the growth of the channel. It's essential to continue sharing this dream with you. I invite you to watch the video until the end. Like and comment and please subscribe. Thank you. In the previous tutorials on this short we saw the animation in rig for the running and the parallax effect of the background. If you haven't seen the links you can find them in the description. We have to see today the animation on the castle at this point and the animation of the logo at the end. Step by step let's see all these animations. As we saw in the previous tutorial at this point the camera flies towards the internal atrium of the castle with a very interesting fake 3D effect. Once enter the palace there is a change of scene where the building behind the wall appears making the viewer fly together with the camera until reaching its top where a fight between samurai and ninja takes place. Scene changes or transitions are very important within a film or a cartoon there are many ways to do them and you need to use a bit of directoral skills for fluid results that give continuity to the scene. The group containing the scene after the previous one is contained within a new group and the first thing you notice is that with the opacity filter everything appears with the right timing. In this second group where the second scene begins with the transition from the previous one we find new elements that we are now going to see. If we scroll inside the group there is a first level an orange shade as if there were some torch lit on the ground plane. Going down we find the levels that make up the clouds. For now I hide these elements to focus on the main element the castle. There are clouds behind the palace too, of course, moon and stars. But what is the castle made of and what animations move it to create this 3D effect as if we were climbing the building in flight? My idea was to transport the viewer to the top of the building 
which had to seem imposing but keeping in mind the three-dimensionality of the elements that constituted to avoid the scene being flat. The castle is therefore divided into different sections and as we will see each piece has elements that come to life to create this effect. But let's see a portion of the palace. If we enter this group we find three levels that constituted the roof, the under roof and the wall. These three parts, as we will see, have their own animations and together they create a very interesting 3D effect. If I remove the camera movement on the entire group that goes from bottom to top, you can better see the animations that make up the elements of the castle. But let's see the animations that move each element to create this fake 3D. Let's hide these two for now. The roof has a resizing animation on the Y axis, with its anchor point fixed at the top. The roof joined to its lower part creates this animation. The under roof has this starting shape, but with the distortion tool we can put it in perspective. Distorting the level in this way, with the Move and Scale tool we go to resize the level on the Y axis again, but this time the anchor point fixed at the base of the shape. Finally we find the wall of the structure, walls only movement is a shift from top to bottom. At this point I just had to stack these groups on top of each other to get this type of animation. As you can see it seems that the parts of the roof widen. To follow the correct perspective I then added the camera movement that from the bottom takes the castle up to the top. And here the result. So combining the camera movement with the animation for each section of the castle which is divided into three parts where the roof changes the perspective allows me to get the right viewing angle of the elements that flow in the scene. The big difference between 2D and 3D animation where for example we have static elements like a castle to create effect the effect like this you will have to learn to move the camera and the elements that form the palace to make the background seem three-dimensional, otherwise your scene will be flat. The animations that are in the castle are not the only ones that we find also the clouds in the background move. Here with the move and scale tool there is a movement on the Y axis where the elements move downwards. This is also a parallax effect. We have already talked in the last tutorial about this effect that can be applied to our scenes not only if there is a lateral movement but also from the bottom up. If I scroll through the tracks then above I will go to see that there are other clouds in the foreground that move faster than those that we find in the background. But in this case, in addition to moving downwards, the clouds also get bigger and bigger, coming ever closer to the camera, with a really interesting 3D effect. So remember that here we applied a resizing animation on the castle elements, to change the viewing angle of the roof, so that it looks like the camera is flying above it. All this combined with a vertical parallax effect to increase the depth of the scene. With the addition of the moon, stars and obviously the characters, everything is completed with a captivating cinematic effect. And uh, as I said before, with a good direction you get a scene that perhaps makes us forget for a moment that we are working on a 2D application on an iPad. I'm sure that with the next update, where it comes, <laughs> We could do even more interesting things and the great is that we will already be ready to exploit the new potential 
to the fullest because we will have already done a lot of practice before with all these animations that we can do at least up to now. We have reached the last part of the tutorial on Assassin's Creed. Then obviously if there is something you are interested in learning more about, ask me in the comments and we will make an even more specific video. So let's go and see the animations on the logo. It's a very simple animation that help me to complete the short as we will see the text files R2 with the writing Assassin's Creed above and shadow below and all the other shapes. Let's start from Assassin's Creed. Within the group we also find these two lines on the sides of Creed. For an intro animation for the text I used the Move and Scale tool. If you pay attention the timing between the two writings is different. Shadows arrives a little before the Assassin's Creed writing. The different timing is primarily used to have a more varied and dynamic animation and to the viewer the writing shadows will stand out even if its position is lower. For the animation instead, as you can see, both the writings have the anchor point fixed at the bottom. This allows the resizing to take place together with a translation downwards. If I resize at this point, the writing enlarges and moves upwards. This is a bit of a perspective principle that we have already seen in one of my previous tutorials. You can find the link below. Same speech for both writings. The logo is positioned in the center of the screen and at this moment there are those two lines coming out of the creed writing. In this case too, the timing of the animation entry is important. Once the writings are still, their animation begins. With the anchor point fixed at one end with the resize tool on the x-axis at zero at the first keyframe, one in the final keyframe, I can get this animation. Then there are the elements of the logo that appear as if they were slashes struck by a samurai. Here Dreams comes to our head with layer masks that can cover and uncover shapes. If I remove them, as you can see, there are these blue shapes that move quickly, revealing the logo. With this trick I can avoid drawing frame by frame, an animation like this, with a result that is still excellent. Layer masks are a very powerful tool in Dreams, in my opinion. Here you have a very simple example, but in my case I use them to create many other types of animation. If you search among my tutorials, for example, I also use them for the animation of the fire. Really interesting. Now I'm going to set them up again. So remember move and scale tool to move shapes quickly plus layer mask for animations like this without having to draw frame by frame. At this point there are the last elements that make up the logo and we can see them on the shadows writing and on the logo at the top. They are blood splatters that appear when the logo arrives. No special animation just different levels appearing at a different timing on the timeline, as if the writing was bloated. If I go to hide it manually, as you can see, there are several. Here the only limit is the desire you have to draw many of them. <laughs> Same thing here. This is obviously a very simple animation, but combined with everything else it makes this logo intro the right final part of my little short on Assassin's Creed. Well dreamers, we have come to the end of this journey into the world of Assassin's Creed Shadows. If you haven't seen it, go and recover the previous tutorials on this project. I'm sure you will find lots of interesting ideas for your future animations. In the next videos there are new things to discover. Thank you so much for watching, 
and...